What's up, this Halloween, I'm dressed up as the scariest thing to ever exist, a theater kid. If you saw my video that I posted yesterday, you know that I broke my knee. That means I had absolutely nothing to do this October, which is my favorite month. I decided that for every day of the month, I would watch a horror or Halloween themed movie and then make a video about them with some brief thoughts on each one. But if this is your first time here, what's up? My name is Connor McDowell and I'm currently campaigning to be People Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive for the year 2023. If you like this video and you think I should be nominated, just click subscribe. One subscribe equals one vote for me to be a sexy, sexy man. Take a good look at this sexy face because you're not going to get to see it for the rest of the video. Alright, that's enough. <laughs> Okay, so the first film that I watched this October was Final Destination, and honestly, it was pretty fun. I had only seen one Final Destination movie before this, which I'll get to later, so I was surprised I liked this as much as I did. Definitely not a great movie, but not even close to the worst thing I've watched this month. Most of the movies in this series are dog shit, and I think that this is the second best one. The concept is good and the cast is fun to watch, although I found myself not really caring about any of the characters at all, so when they ended up dying, more often than not, I was just happy that they were dead. It just wasn't as memorable as I thought or wanted it to be. Three out of five stars. Also follow me on Letterboxd if you want to see my opinions on every single movie that I watch. <laughs> Final Destination 2 is not as good as the first one, which means it's automatically under three stars. Although a lot of the kills in this one are super memorable. Pretty much any time I thought of the Final Destination series before I watched these was the opening scene of this movie where the logs fly off of the truck. If I'm being honest, this one just felt a lot slower and a lot more stupid than the first. A lot of the kills are fun, but the dialogue is just so, so bad. I also didn't care for these characters at all, even though they brought in one of the main characters from the last movie. Two and a half out of five. <laughs> Final Destination 3 is the best out of the series, and that's really saying something. I finally found myself caring about the main cast of characters, but that's definitely just because Maria Elizabeth Winstead gave a standout performance. Literally the best performance of the whole franchise. Ryan Merriman is in this too. You might know him from the DCOM, The Luck of the Irish. Still not a great movie, but the kills and the set pieces are very fun. I also love that they try to claim that a photo predicted 9-11. That was awesome. Three and a half out of five. <laughs> The Final Destination is one of the worst movies I've seen in my entire life, and no, I'm not exaggerating. I mean, the first problem with the movie is that they didn't name it Final Destination 4, they named it The Final Destination, which confused the fuck out of me when I was trying to find the fourth movie. The movie was made in 2009, so it's at the height of studios pushing every movie as 3D. That means a lot of deaths in this movie look absolutely horrible. The characters are horrible, and the acting, well... Let's just say it's a big reason I didn't like this movie. There's also this racist Nazi guy in the movie, and I'm convinced that the only reason he's in it is so they had a reason to include the N-word. One out of five stars. <laughs> Final Destination 5. Oh look, we've learned to count again. This was the only Final Destination movie I had seen before, and it feels really weird to say that it's not the worst one. I am not a huge fan of this movie at all, and honestly I'm not a big fan of the series, but having to watch this movie again really proved to me that the ending makes this movie so much better. Two and a half out of five. Okay, thank god we're done with those movies. What's next? <laughs> Oh god, really? Haunted Mansion sucks, and I'm not talking about the 2003 movie with Eddie Murphy. I'll get to that one in a second. With a cast of people I really like, including Lakeith Stanfield, Danny DeVito, Owen Wilson, and Rosario Dawson, I really wanted this movie to be good, or at least watchable. I don't want to go into too much detail because I might make a video later on comparing the two movies, but I will say that the one thing that pissed me off is they kept leaving the fucking mansion. I mean, like, every other scene takes place outside the mansion. Sure, the ghosts follow them wherever they go, but the stakes feel non-existent if they can just leave. Also, way too many characters. Two out of five. <laughs> Now we're cooking Disney's The Haunted Mansion. This shit fucks. It fucks so hard. 
from the awesome opening to the horrifying zombie chase scene, this movie makes me so happy. I know most people hate this movie and think it's garbage, but I genuinely don't understand. It's funny, scary, and has Eddie Murphy. What more can you ask for? Five out of five, and no, I'm not joking. <laughs> Halloween Town is one of those movies from my childhood that I was worried wasn't going to hold up. And yeah, it really doesn't. But I still absolutely love this movie. I forced my girlfriend to watch it for the first time and she didn't like it. I do not understand. It's so cute and it's fun and there's a gay werewolf that cuts hair. How could you not love it? Also, Marnie may or may not have been a huge childhood crush of mine. Four and a half out of five. Midsommar is my favorite horror movie of all time. Don't think I need to say anything else. Genuinely, just a fantastic film. Five out of five. The Ritual is definitely a movie that I watched, but I honestly can't remember much of what happens. I remember that I liked it enough, and I remember the ending and thinking it was really cool, and I remember that they were British, but other than that, I don't remember much. Not saying it's a bad movie, just not super memorable, at least for me. Three and a half out of five. <laughs> Apostle was actually really cool. I'm a sucker for movies about cults, so naturally I liked it. I don't want to say too much because this movie is weird and gory and definitely not for everyone, but absolutely something for me. If Dan Stevens infiltrating a cult run by Michael Sheen sounds like something you'd be into, I definitely recommend it. Not the greatest movie ever, but a lot of fun for the whole family. Four out of five. I also straight up thought Michael Sheen was Andy Serkis for like half the movie. <laughs> Aramintari, The Blacksmith and the Devil, is a Basque film about a blacksmith who tortures a demon in his home. If you're like me, you're probably thinking, oh, fuck yeah, that sounds awesome. Now, I hate to be a party pooper, but the torture involves forcing the demons to count chickpeas? I'm not even kidding. In this movie, the demon's one big weakness is that if he sees chickpeas, he's forced to count them. There's no blood or gore or guts or veins in my teeth, it's just chickpeas. This movie has to be based on some Basque folklore that I just don't know, because I was so confused the whole time. There was also a tight zoom in on a demon penis, and I really didn't like that. I think I might have to do a video on this whole movie too, just because there's simply too much to talk about. One out of five stars. <laughs> I was really scared to watch Us. Not because I was worried it would be scary, but because I've heard many people, both online and in person, say it sucks. Now, I'm a really big fan of Jordan Peele. I think Get Out and Nope are incredible films. So I was really worried when I heard Us wasn't good or wasn't as good as Get Out. I specifically didn't watch it because I didn't want to be disappointed by it. Well, I guess this month was the time to watch it. And I actually really enjoyed it. I don't really understand why people don't like this movie. I thought it was a great time. Is it as good as Get Out? or nope well no but it's still a great movie four out of five <laughs> Mom's Got a Date with a Vampire is the type of cheesy-ass Disney Channel original movie that I absolutely love. The movie itself isn't very good, but because it's a part of my childhood, I absolutely love it. You can tell the cast knew the movie they were making was bad, but still had fun anyway. I'm looking at you, Caroline Ray. Three out of five. <laughs> Scooby-Doo is another movie that I absolutely love, but people seem to hate. I honestly don't understand why, because it's genuinely one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. It's so funny that I'm going to name my top five favorite bits with no context. One, Mary Jane. Two, when they're making eggplant burgers in the mystery machine. Three, Sugar Ray. Four, Melvin Dew. And five, purple is a fall color. Four out of five. <laughs> Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed, however, 
is not good. I really don't know what happened between the making of these two movies because they feel vastly different. The comedy in this one is more fart and poop humor and less adult-oriented jokes and themes. Sure, there was a fair share of poop humor in the first one, but I rarely found myself laughing at this one. Also, significantly less weed jokes, which definitely lowers the score a bit. I don't know, I guess I was just expecting more from a childhood favorite, and Scooby-Doo 2 just didn't deliver. Also, can we stop giving Velma boyfriends? Everybody knows she's not straight. Two and a half out of five. <laughs> Mater and the Ghost Light. I mean, what more is there to say? It's a five minute short about the cars from Cars getting upset that Mater keeps pulling pranks on them. It's cute, but also it's Mater and the Ghost Light. Two and a half out of five. <laughs> The first Friday the 13th movie is kind of bad. I've never seen a single film in this franchise, and I know people like it, but it was so boring. I'm just kind of disappointed. I knew Jason wasn't the main villain in this one, but what I didn't know was that Mrs. Voorhees is so dull. I just don't care about her. Zombie dude that drowns is so much cooler. Also, there just isn't an explanation as to why it's called Friday the 13th in this movie. I haven't seen any of the other movies in this franchise yet, so maybe they explain it there, but I have a feeling that they just made this movie and then titled it after a familiar superstition. It's sad that I liked Mater and the Ghost Light more than this. Two out of five. <laughs> The Cabin in the Woods is exactly what I needed after three bad movies in a row. I remember hearing a little bit about this movie, like how it was a comedy, but I just never watched it until now. And holy shit, am I happy that I did. I really like how they kind of reveal the twist in the very beginning of the movie, but then keep giving you clues until the big climax, which is just so much fun. I don't want to spoil anything, so I won't say much more, but go watch it if you haven't seen it. Four and a half out of five. <laughs> The Exorcist was shockingly good. I know that's an obvious statement to most people, but after my run-in with the last classic horror series, I was worried this would suck as bad as Friday the 13th, but I was wrong. I was very wrong, because this is actually one of the most disturbing movies I've seen in a long time. The characters are relatable, and the movie actually makes you care for the little girl that gets possessed, Reagan. If you are someone that doesn't like vomit or kids, don't watch this movie. Four and a half out of five. <laughs> Exorcists 2 The Heretic is actually one of the worst movies I've ever seen, which sucks because the first one was so good. Reagan comes back in this movie, but her whole gimmick is that because she was possessed, she can now cure people who have autism? Absolutely bonkers. There's also this really weird theme involving a locust that culminates in James Earl Jones dressed up like a locust. This whole movie makes no fucking sense. I really thought this was going to be the lowest of the low for exorcist movies, but I was very, very wrong. I'll get into that in a minute. One and a half out of five. <laughs> The Exorcist 3 was better, still not great, but miles better than the last. This one actually has a semi-coherent plot involving a serial killer. I say semi-coherent because some of it still makes no fucking sense. There was one jump scare in this movie that actually made me shit myself, and that's when the, the serial killer was behind the nurse with the giant scissors. Shit was crazy. Anyway, the movie was fine. Three out of five stars. <laughs> Exorcist The Beginning is a prequel to the first Exorcist movie about one of the priests from the first movie and his first encounter with the demon from the first movie. It's about as confusing as it sounds. If you've seen any of the other Exorcist movies but not this one, don't bother. It looks horrible, it's written horribly, the forced plot twist is horrible. The only thing not horrible about this movie is Stellan Skarsgård, who is the only actor that seems like he cares. Oh. I forgot to mention how racist this movie is. It tries to make a point about racism, I guess, but it ends up making the whole movie feel super racist. Even though I haven't seen the new one, I can safely say this is the worst Exorcist movie that has ever been made. One out of five stars. If you think I'm over-exaggerating how bad this movie is, well, even the people that made it agree with me because they remade the movie the year after this one was released. <laughs> Dominion, prequel to The Exorcist, is that remake. I cannot stress enough 
how funny it is that they remade the whole movie and still ended up with this steaming pile of garbage. Most of the characters are the same, except they replaced all of the actors except for Stellan Skarsgård. The plot is almost one to one except for the addition of a disabled boy who, spoiler alert, ends up being possessed by the demon. This movie also tries to say a lot about imperialism and racism again, but just ends up feeling racist. It's an improvement on the last one, but not by much. One and a half out of five. <laughs> Trick or Treat was actually really funny. I had no clue that this movie was a comedy and I was very happy to learn that it was. The plot is made of four different stories that all connect at some point and it was fun to try and guess where and how. I was usually wrong. It was just a lot of fun. Four out of five. <laughs> Now, I'm a very big fan of the original black and white version that came out last year. I might even say it's one of my favorite MCU projects because of its stylized visuals, but Disney Plus didn't think they made enough money from it, so they re-released the whole thing, but in color. By doing this, they've ripped the entire purpose and art of the movie right out of it. As someone who is a Marvel shill, I usually like most things they do, but this is just stupid. If they wanted to do this, what they should have done is try and stylize it to match Technicolor from the 19th. 1950s, so that it still felt like we were watching an old movie. Although I gotta admit, it's pretty cool seeing gore in the MCU. Three and a half out of five. <laughs> My whole childhood, I was absolutely terrified of Chucky. So I stayed away from this movie like the fucking plague. Can't tell you why, I was just scared. I was really expecting this movie to suck, but surprisingly, I really enjoyed it. I thought it had the right levels of stupidity and gore that had me laughing a lot more than I expected. I don't know if this movie was made to be funny, but it absolutely is, and I love it for that. Four out of five. <laughs> Evil Dead Rise was so much fucking fun, guys. I can't even explain it. I love the Evil Dead franchise and purposefully didn't see this in theaters because I just assumed it was gonna suck. Is it a fantastic movie? No. But it's really creepy and gory and just all around fucking awesome. You will straight up never catch me owning a cheese grater ever again. Four and a half out of five. <laughs> Can you believe that I've never seen a Scream movie before in my life? Neither can I. I watched this on October 27th, and it's already one of my favorite horror movies of all time. The whole thing just oozes with charm and comedy. I just couldn't resist being sucked in for the whole time. I want to keep this brief, so all I'll say is that if you haven't seen it, go watch it, because it's really funny and just so, so good. Five out of five stars. <laughs> I finally got around to watching The Witch, and, if I'm being honest, I was kinda let down. Not that the movie is bad, it's not at all. I think I was just expecting more. I haven't seen any of Robert Eggers' other films yet, so I can't say the same for them, but I think I definitely had my expectations a little too high with this one. Anya Taylor-Joy and Kate Dickey are absolute standouts in this movie, and if you're going to watch it for any reason, watch it for them. Three and a half out of five. And finally, we get to the last film on this list, and what better way to end the month than with... <laughs> I have never played any of the FNAF games, but I have a very good friend who knows a lot of the lore, and about two years ago, they gave me a rundown on pretty much everything. So I knew what I was getting into. And honestly, the movie was a lot of fun. I think Matthew Lillard is some of the best casting I've seen in a long time, and it was really nice to see Josh Hutcherson getting back into film. There were some parts that I thought really dragged, and I wish it was scarier, but overall, I really enjoyed it. Three and a half out of five. So those are the 31 films I watched this October. And I know what you're thinking. I didn't actually watch 31 films. I watched 30 films and one five minute long Cars animated short. Well, the joke's on you because I prepared for that. So here's the actual 31st film that I watched. <laughs> Repo the Genetic Opera is one of the biggest piles of fucking garbage that I've ever seen. This movie objectively sucks, but I fucking love it. I mean, how can you not? It's a cheesy musical with a lot of over-the-top body horror, and it's directed by the guy that made Saw 2. This is one of the few movies that I try to watch every year, and this year, I decided to force my roommate to watch it, 
and he had no idea what was going on the whole time. I don't want to say too much because eventually I want to make a whole video on this movie because there's just so much to talk about. My brain is telling me to give it two stars, but my heart is saying five, so I'll compromise. Three and a half out of five. Woo! I lied. I'm back. You can look at me a little bit more. I just wanted to say that that's going to be it for me today. If you like this video, don't forget to click like and subscribe if you think I should be nominated to be People Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive for the year 2023. Let me know in the comments down below if you liked any of the movies that I hated or you hate any of the movies that I liked. I really like to see people's different perspectives because as you know, there are a few movies on here that a lot of people hate that I absolutely love. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments. I'm going to put links to all of my social media in the description, including my discord if you want to join my discord i'm also going to link my venmo down there just in case anybody wants to financially help me out while i'm out of work i'm connor mcdowell i'm gonna go stuff my face with candy that i bought myself because i can't trick or treat this year both because i can't walk and because i'm almost 24 years old thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time Zytrate comes in a little glass vial. A little glass vial? A little